The following satellite transmission, copyrighted by the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, is available for live broadcast in 10 seconds or for taping and rebroadcast by NAAM, FM, shortwave, cable, or video outlet globally. This is a WBN Worldwide Broadcasting Network production. This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance broadcast. Whenever next you venture outdoors on a sunny day, Cast your eyes to the skies and take a moment to study all that you see. On a typical afternoon over most places on this planet, you will behold skies of some shade of blue, a sun burning white, hot orange and yellow, and perhaps a scattering of clouds. A cloud is nothing more nor less than a mist of moisture, water particles floating together thousands of feet above the surface of the earth in a vapor of microscopic droplets. Yet when a cloud in the sky rolls overhead between you and the sun, a shadow drifts across the earth, and the flaming sun is momentarily obscured by what is in truth a mere wisp of moisture. One thin cloud of vapor can conceal for the moment the blazing sun overhead. But still, the sun shines on. And in similar fashion, beyond the dark clouds of doubt in your mind, the love of God still shines on. Refuse to permit any negative feelings and emotions to keep you from enjoying the living truth within your soul. Have faith. Do not permit the fogs of confusion and the mists of doubt to obscure the joy and the peace and serenity of the finding and knowing of the living God, your father and your friend. God loves you. God wants good things for your life. And only your skepticism, doubting, and utter refusal to believe can keep you from the full experience of these good things in your life. It's like sitting in the audience in front of a 90-piece symphony orchestra, playing the most beautiful music ever composed with your fingers in your ears. That is what it's like to doubt the loving forgiveness of God. It's like stopping your ears before beautiful music or covering your eyes rather than looking at a splendid sunset or holding your nose when you walk through a fragrant flower garden or refusing to taste a delicious meal that a master chef has set before you at the table. It is entirely your choice. It is your decision. Spiritual satisfaction and the joys of finding and knowing God are likewise available to you this very moment. But you are the one who must decide to take these things and have them for your own by living faith. Remember that God has loved you for all of your life, and God has cared for you all your life. You may ask, but how has God cared for me? Answer this. What is it that you have been breathing all of your life since the obstetrician slapped you on the back and you first sputtered, gasped, and took a breath into your lungs? Air, the very air in your nostrils. Whether you live on the seashores of England or the mountains of Tibet, the plains of western Kansas or the fjords of Norway, wherever you may live on this planet, you live in an atmospheric envelope of air, composed largely of oxygen and nitrogen, with traces of countless other natural particles, as well as increasing numbers of unnatural particles spewed forth by the smokestacks of factories of humankind, the tailpipes of aromatic automobiles, trains, trucks, and buses belching black carbon and diesel drippings. But aside from all of that, the fogs and smogs of man-made pollutions, what God originally provided for you to breathe is good, clean air and plentifully provided. God also gave you water to drink. And despite the industrial waste, sewage and sludge, poisons and pesticides, oil spills and chemical leaks, most of the water on this planet is still usable and drinkable. And God provided food. Everything from the cattle on a thousand hills to the fish of the seas, the chickens and game birds, wheat and oats, potatoes and onions, cantaloupes and cucumbers, apples, oranges, peaches and pears, eggs and acorns and peanuts and beans and rice and jalapeno peppers, tomatoes, radishes, sugar cane and molasses and maple trees, and the buckwheat to make the pancakes and the butter from the cows to put on them with the syrup. Even the man-made foods are really made from such products as simple soybean meal texturized and flavored to taste differently. All of the food you eat for every meal of every day was grown somewhere on this planet and was created by the living and loving God, who provided salt beds and pepper plants and thousands of other sorts of herbs and spices grown all over the world for flavoring these foods which you eat. 
The house in which you live was probably framed with wood from trees or constructed from stone or bricks made with materials from sand and gravel pits or cement and concrete made from naturally occurring materials. The shoes or sandals on your feet are made from leather from cattle hide and rubber from rubber trees or synthetics from petroleum products from the earth. The clothing you wear is made from cotton grown in fields or wool from sheep or synthetics which themselves are made from naturally occurring products. All of this is made available to you by the creator of this universe, the living God. What has God ever done for you? God has not only given you life, God has given you everything you need to sustain and maintain your life. God has provided you with a planet surrounded by air to breathe, with water to drink, fruits, vegetables, grains, plants and bird and animal life and fish to eat, materials to build housing and shelter from the weather and the elements, fibers for making textiles and clothing for your personal comfort and survival. God has, in fact, provided you with everything you need for your sustenance and maintenance of life for your health and your comfort. That's what God has ever done for you in answer to the question, what has God ever done for me? God has given you the priceless gift of life itself, something which the most advanced medical and biological science has not been able to create. In addition, God has given you the senses of eyesight, hearing, touch, taste, and smell, and even more than all that, God has given you a fragment of infinity, a spark of spirit, something of himself to dwell within your mortal mind in order that you may enjoy the delights of the spiritual life, the love and peace and joy and purpose of finding a higher plan and purpose for yourself, the satisfactions of discovering truth, and beauty and goodness, the deep contentment of love, both loving and being loved. God fills this universe with love like the noontime sunshine fills the sky with light. God loves you intensely and incredibly with a sustaining, pervasive, persistent, undying, ever faithful love for you. God could have made this world all in shades of gray with practically no visual variety, but instead God filled it with crystal blue lakes and streams and oceans, green pastures and flowers of red and yellow and blue and violet and every hue and shade between and thousands of fragrances. What if everything smelled like some variation of wet cardboard, mildewed mattress or damp dog? Instead, God filled this world with fragrances from sea breezes to the clean, sandy scent of the desert to the moist earth of furrowed farmland, flowers, trees, and meadows, pine forests, and eucalyptus, and all the other marvelous varieties of smells which you can recognize. What if all food tasted like raw eggs, sawdust, or tofu? Instead, there are flavors, varieties of flavors from baked potatoes to fresh green peas, Radishes, turnip greens, barbecued ribs, milk and butter, garlic and paprika, sharp cheeses and cold watermelon and iced cream and pizza, tacos, Cajun red beans and rice, French escargot, German sausages, tropical coconuts, Cantonese and Mandarin and Szechuan Chinese cooking, North Pole walrus butter, Central and South American spiced meats and vegetables, and the different flavors and cuisines of every land and culture on this earth. And then there are the varieties of sounds. What if everything sounded like some tone or pitch akin to creaking doors, howling tomcats, garbage trucks compacting tin cans, fingernails on a blackboard, and fender removal day at the auto body shop, or a mufflerless motorcycle parade? Now, instead, God provided the beautiful songs of birds, the whisper of the breeze, the rustling of wind through meadow grass, the chirp of cheerful crickets, and lightning and thunder and the seaside surf and other sounds. And instead of everything feeling alike, God created countless textures from volcanic glass to velvet moss, cool water, and thousands of other feelings. All that you eat and drink, see and hear and smell and taste and touch, all of this is a gift of the living God, your Father and your friend, who loves you infinitely and who has given you all of this precisely because God does love you. 
And the greatest joy of all is loving God in return, worshiping God, praising God, being glad for God, for his lavish and bountiful material gifts, and most importantly, for his unspeakably delightful spiritual gifts of love and fellowship and his gift of eternal life as a son or daughter of this living God. That is who and what and why you were born to find and know God and delight in God for all of time and for eternity and love for God and others. That is living. That is really living. Thank God for that. And if you have not discovered this marvelous spiritual dimension of life, which is really the most important dimension of life, may you find God now. And may all of this begin for you this very instant. And then write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Post Office Box 3080-3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644 USA. That's the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, or abbreviated SRI. Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644 USA. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Seven Principles of Prayer. How do you pray? What difference does it make? Fatherhood of God, Brotherhood of Man. Life after death, what happens when you die? And what difference does it make about what you believe happens when you die in the way you live your life day by day? Write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644. For those of you listening in other countries around the world, over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell that mailing address. That's Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, USA. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, May God's will be done by you. Good day.